Hi everyone, it's Sarah Jane from Bella Coco and today I'm going to be helping you through my sundown market bag pattern. This video will be split into two parts where I'll show you the key techniques used for this project. Don't forget to check out the description box underneath this video where you will find all of the information you will need. I will list all the tools and materials that you will need for this project. You will find the free pattern and for those of you who prefer to print off their patterns or download onto your phone or device to save for later, you will find the link to the low cost PDF pattern. This PDF pattern will also contain additional notes, diagrams and photos to help help you through should you feel that you need a little more help. So are you ready to start? Let's get going with part one. For the Sundown Market Bag you will need the Paintbox Cotton Aran. I have used five balls of this. This actually comes in a set of five. You can buy it as a bundle together so I'll leave a link in the description box below for that. Obviously you can choose whichever colour you prefer. You will need a four and a half millimetre crochet hook, you will need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to sew in your ends. So as I mentioned I'm going to show you the basic techniques that you're going to need for this project. You're going to start off by creating your slip knot and you can do this in whichever method you prefer. Go ahead and insert your crochet hook and we're going to start off with a foundation of 31 chains. So yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. So go ahead and chain those 31 chains and meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I have just worked those 31 stitches. We're now going to work back along this chain and we're going to be working into the spine of the chain. So as you look at your chain here, you might ordinarily work into this top section here. So we have a top loop and a bottom loop. You're going to twist it so that you can see these bumps on the back and this is the spine of the chain. We're going to be working into the second loop from the hook so we don't count the one that's on the hook. This is our first one and the second one so the second chain from the hook and we're going to be doing a double crochet. So that's a UK term in the US this is known as single crochet. So you want to go ahead and insert your hook into the spine of that chain so as you insert your hook you will look like you have one chain on the hook, yarn over and pull through, you'll have two loops on the hook and yarn over and pull through both of those loops on the hook and that is a double crochet. You're then going to go ahead and go into the next stitch and do a double crochet and into the next stitch and do a double crochet. You will work your way along the whole of this chain and you will end up with 30 double crochets in total. Go ahead, pause the video, work all the way along the spine of the chain and meet me back in just a moment. So I have just completed row one and we're going to go ahead and move on to row two. Rows two to six are exactly the same. So we're going to start off by chaining one and that chain one does not class as a stitch here or throughout the pattern. We're going to go ahead and do a double crochet into that very first stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. So that's our first stitch into the next stitch with a double crochet and you're going to double crochet all the way along until you get to the end of the row. As I say, you're going to do this for rows two to six. So pause the video, make sure that you're taking note of which row that you are on. Work those rows two to six. You'll have 30 stitches in each row. And meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so once you have built all six of those rows, you're going to go ahead and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six and turn your work. We're now going to start on the actual mesh part of the bag and we're going to do this without disconnecting the yarn, we're just going to go straight into it. This way it'll just make much more of a sturdier bag finish. So what we're going to do here is chain those six which we've just done and then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. So we're going to miss 
this um, chain here and we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead, go straight into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. You will now have created a loop which is creating part of the mesh section of the bag. We're going to do that again, so we're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we're going to double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to do this all the way along, so we'll just chain six, two, three, four, five, and six, and then again double crochet into the next stitch. You'll keep doing that until you get to the very last stitch and what you will find is these will start to ruffle a little bit. That is completely normal so don't worry too much when that happens. Work your way all the way along and meet me back in just a moment. So when you get to the end of row seven this is what it will look like. So as I said it will be quite a lot of stitches in a small space but this will open it out to make the mesh bag and this is what's going to make it really nice and expandable. So for row 8 to 52 it's going to be exactly the same. We're going to start off by chaining 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and turn your work. You're going to double crochet into this chain six from the previous row. So you're just going to go ahead and go into that chain six, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two. We've then connected row seven to row eight. We're going to chain six again, one, two, three, four, five, and six and move across to the next chain six from the previous row and double crochet into there. This is what you're going to do all the way along. So chain six, two, three, four, five, six, grab the next chain six and double crochet. You can see that this starts to open out the shape of the bag. So go ahead, do this all the way to the very end what I'll do is I'll come back and show you how to finish off the very end stitches just so you're sure and how to move on to the next row. So pause the video and meet me back in just a moment. Okay so I've just come to the end of row 8 and here you're simply going to go into that last chain 6 from the previous row and then you're going to chain 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 turn the work and do that all over again. So that very first stitch goes into this first chain six just here and you'll do your double crochet and as you pull it out you'll see that it creates these diamond shapes to your bag. You're simply going to do this all the way along, three, four, five, six, move into the next chain six and do your double crochet. I'm going to go ahead and work my way across one more time and just give you a few hints of what to look for when working into the ends of your rows because it can get a little bit confusing once you start to build. So I'm going to work my way across and meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so when you get to the end of your row, this is what it will look like. You have a diamond shape here and then you have two sections. This is the last chain that you're going to go in, so you're going to do your double crochet in there. And then you're going to go ahead and chain six and turn your work as you did before. So go ahead, pause the video. This is the main section of your bag, so this is going to take the most amount of time. I have done rows seven, eight, and this is nine. You're going to go ahead and do that to 52 rows and meet me back once you're ready. Okay, so once you have worked your mesh, you're going to move on to row 53. And for this, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Um, essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to cinch this in like the opposite side is cinched in at the top. 
So we've done our chain one and we're going to double crochet in each chain six space across. So this chain one does not class as a stitch. We're going to go into that first chain six and you want to make sure that you're keeping your tension quite tight here. So that's one and then we're going to go into the next chain six. Again, keeping that tension quite tight because we're bringing it in. That's two, move across, watch your tension and bring it in. And you're going to do this all the way across until you get to your last chain six. So go ahead and pause the video, work your way all the way across and meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so once you have worked that row, this is what the stitches will look like. So they will look slightly looser than what you would normally see them. But what you want to do is try and make sure that the width of this is very similar. It doesn't matter if it's slightly bigger, but very similar to the opposite side. Um, then when we build the next row, we can kind of cinch it in a little bit and make it a little bit tighter. So for rows 54 to 58, we're going to chain one and turn. And you're going to do one double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So remember, this is where we can make it that little bit tighter. And you're going to do one double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So go ahead, pause the video, work those rows. You will end up with six rows um, in total, just the same as the opposite side. Once you've done that, meet me back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now that you have completed the other side, just double check that you've done the right amount of stitches. It should actually match the opposite side that you did to begin with. And what we're going to do now is move on to the side pieces and then also finish off with the handles. That will be in the second video, so make sure that you go and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description box below for that particular video. Also, don't forget that in the description box below will be the link to the blog post with the free written pattern. And for those of you who like to print off your patterns or store them on your phone or device, then there is the ad-free printable PDF as well. I really hope that you have enjoyed starting to make your Sundown Market bag. I would love to see your progress, so don't forget to come and tag me on Instagram at Bella Coco Crochet so that I can see what you're making and share with everybody else as well. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again for part two.